I think we'll start um, straight away with some meditation. So <clears throat> I'm sitting in a chair today, this particular situation I'm in. So wherever you are, let's take that time out to return to the source, our center. We'll do this through coming into body, where I'm sitting, feeling the feet flat on the floor, body rising above that, sitting on the cushion, feeling your thighs on the floor, on the mat, firmness, and a sense of openness between the thighs. So you're opening the base of the body, keep your, so your, your legs or your feet form a firm foundation. And then relaxing in the center of your body, down through the base of the abdomen. So we get the sense of openness. Both these elements are necessary. Firmness gives us that sense of security, definite location. The openness allows energy to travel. This is really essential. So as you're sitting, Try to simplify your experience of your body to these two qualities, firmness, what is necessary to be firm, could be a spine, pelvis, feet. And what is necessary to be open Work from the base upwards, the abdomen, the chest. Throat. Face. And you may need some help with that. So starting from the lower body, feel that firm foundation in your legs. As you breathe out. So if you're resting, resting the weight of your body on an out breath, just like sitting on a rubber ball, an inflatable, the air is going out of the inflatable going out of an inflatable cushion or inflatable ball, the air is going out and you're sitting there quite comfortably. Breathing out. This is the first aspect. So, um, Basic, but it needs to be re-established constantly because our tendency is to not really let go. We wait for the next breath or we're hesitant, something in the body like a nerve reflex. So you want to feel the firmness of the ground beneath you, space around you. And for just these few minutes, 
let the world go. Rest on that all as the air is going out. And with the air, breath is only one aspect of the breath. It's the, it's the physical aspect of it, <clears throat> but it provides a lead for the more subtle aspect, which is the energy. This energy, our breathing connects to all the energy channels in our body. So bring to mind, the mind connects in this way, bring to mind a sense of everything, the fingers, your face, everything also being part of that long out breath. And then to receive the in breath when it comes in. The more we can feel getting used to this sense of releasing on the out breath completely energetically, not just the air itself, but the energy. Everything in our body and mind softens, softens, becomes more trusting, open. And the inhalation comes in. And we allow the inhalation to fill us. Most important, filling the chest. So when you're sitting, keep your arms slightly away from the sides of your body. So you can allow your chest to swell. So if that ball that you breathed out is coming up into your chest. The ball is gently expanding. If you can continue this process into your face, remember the face is only one third of your head. So if you enter your awareness from the throat up into the center of the head, inside the mouth, and you can feel the head bones around that, the neck holding your head up, the firmness of the neck holding the head up, and balance the head, letting the breath energy fill the head so you can relax your eyes, cheeks, forehead, and so on. Everything is to be practiced with a sense of trust <clears throat> rather than pressure, allowing things to open in their own way. We maintain open attitude. You don't quite know what will come, 
But when you have the firmness of the meditation position, firmness of your approach, trust you can be with what arises. As you open the heart, so you have the open body, open attitude, no plans, no predictions, open heart. And apart from the immediate circumstances of your time or place, when you open the heart, what do you what do you meet? What do you sense there? Joyfulness could be pressure. We bring that open attitude, open heart, bring that to the forefront, mindfully sustaining that quality. support from the body's steady energy. If you find a lot of emotions or moods are coming up, anxiety, uncertainty, sadness, irritation, but to just keep referring back to the stability of body, and keep relaxing the tendency to get worry about it or try to change things, trust the quality of open heart. Allow things to change.
Okay, so it's um, open your eyes. Hmm. So we're cultivating the middle way, the middle path. How do we keep that sense of balance? Balance, as I've said before, is the experience when you feel very centered and poised, but it's very also very relaxed. You feel open, sensitive, and yet you're also quite firmly centered. This is the quality of the eight, of the middle way. It's the middle way between pushing forward and pulling back, between defending things and attacking things between um, mental proliferation and stagnation. You know, we can be thinking a lot, or we can just go dull and stupid. <laughs> and it's always um, moderated around these properties, sati sampajanya, which I mentioned last time. And to remind you again, sampajanya, the awareness of purpose so you're bearing in mind what is what is purpose what is the goal that this practice can lead to the goal here is peace inner peace coolness release purification whatever words you may have for that you keep that what sense of where where you're where you're heading so it's not about gaining or figuring things out. It's about the mind coming into harmony and ending struggle. Right? The heart is no longer struggling, no longer overwhelmed, no longer frightened. So there's a purpose there, the, the, the refuge, the strengthening, the purification of the heart. The suitability so we're finding suitable means to bring that around. And here we're using, in this particular situation, we're just using the form of the body, mindfulness of body, uh, mindfulness of different kinds of body, actually, um, which I'll talk about in a little while. But that, so we might say suitable, you don't feel it's way beyond your reach. You can manage it, you can do it, you can find some access to that. So this is really just the simplicity of sitting, standing, walking. Um, context, situation. We talk about the external situation, where I'm right now I'm in Germany, that doesn't really matter very much. <clears throat> but we might very well find ourselves in a situation of some conflict, some disappointment, some sense of things we have to do, a feeling of hopelessness. If we look at some of the tragic events in the world, we can feel hopeless, overwhelmed. And so mm, situational awareness, well, within that, what is suitable to give attention to? Within all this that you can be aware of, you know, the channels of the senses, the channels of the thinking mind, all that you can be aware of, what is situationally appropriate. And in this sense, it's good to recognize we have uh, uh, different, different bodies. So we have an anatomical body, a physical body, <clears throat> sitting in that. Within that physical body, you have an energy body which is all the energies that run through this physical form, keep it alive, keep it fresh, keep it vitalized, that, that um, activate its impulses, activate its uh, joy, activate its anger, energy channels running through the body. They both refresh, vitalize the body, also enable us to bring up certain responses. So the energy system runs through the body, that activates the heart. Very important to recognize this energy body. Because this energy body is very much affected by the karma, the, 
karma, body of karma, which means the kind of inheritance or the patterns or the habits of our emotions, of our responses, of our attitudes that we're living within. We may have socially acquired attitudes, we may have basically almost uh, naturally acquired attitudes, a, a sense of defense, a sense of um, seeking comfort, a wish for uh, warmth and harmony. Uh, these are really basic karmic qualities that we inherit that very much establish the way that we're going to act. We act in accordance with karmic tendencies, seeking comfort, seeking stability, seeking warmth, also seeking to have something to do. Everything, everyone wants to do something, purpose. That's why it's important to have a purpose that's definite. The purpose here is to clean, and stabilize the energy body. So negative karmic forces or even karmic forces which are bound up with confusion, misunderstanding, other people's opinions are not taking over. Now, for example, we might have we might be have the idea that we should be a certain way. We should be progressive, we should be hardworking, we should be getting the top of our profession, we should be able to cope with things, we should be this, we should be that. There's a lot of this goes on. And we we get the energy body takes that on. Yeah, so you find yourself having knee-jerk reactions, uh, always rushing around trying to get things done, feeling you haven't done enough, assuming you have responsibility for things you don't have responsibility for. So you get social conditioned, either should be, ought to be programs that get established. And our energy body is in this sense of strain because of that, because it's always should be something that I'm not. Well. When you think that through, should be something that I'm not, I'm not, there's a certain stress there, isn't it? Mm. Yeah? So, so what, what, is, what is here? Mm. Mm. And this is where we, we need to remember the fourth basis of Sampajanya is non-delusion. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Non-delusion means what is here is awareness, is sensitivity, is what's arising in the mind now. Uh, so, and it's changeable. And it's up to us to be non-deluded about that where, where we are right now and what we are right now. What we're not right now is a historical person. So uh, do you see what I mean? Our, our energy gets captured into being a person who is efficient, effective, punctual, gets things done, interesting, fun, attractive, strong, capable, reliable. <laughs> These are all good qualities. Well, they, they can be good qualities, but the idea that you should be them puts a stress on the energy system. And you can recognize that you can only have these qualities can only be arise from conditions. And the condi you know, and they're, they're changeable. You know, you're not expected to be cheerful all the time. It's all right to not feel cheerful. You can't be punctual every day. It's all right to not be punctual. You can't get everything done. Yeah, so, we, when, when we understand the trap of the personality package, which tries to establish us as something effective, useful, competent, bright, cheerful, whatever, as a permanent quality, this is a delusion. This is a delusion. Because there is no person. There is no permanent person. You know, somebody says to you, oh, Janice, oh, Suki, whatever, every day, they give the same name, but 
you're not the same person. You know, when you look at actually directly what's happening, it's changing all the time, isn't it? It's shifting all the time. What are they, you know? And when we look at another person, who is that? We see a shape, which is probably pretty much like it was yesterday, maybe. But then with non-delusion, you always want to keep aware of, well, maybe so. Who's that? So you allow fresh things, new things to arise. This keeps us properly respectful of each other rather than taking each other for granted. Yeah. So it's not that, oh, you're that, you're the person who does this. That's a delusion. Yeah. And if we do it to ourselves, I'm the person who does this. That's a delusion. Yeah. Because and the, the burden of that delusion is carried by the energy body, has to carry this weight of being a person which doesn't actually exist. <laughs> and so it, it both creates a weight by putting our system into something that's really just a, a notion, a box, you know? And it also inhibits truly imaginative qualities to arise. You know, that because the person is always pre-established so we, when we operate like that, we keep operating according to habits. And this is a very powerful social force to get habitual because in a social sphere, we, we want other people to be a habit. I want you to be that which I need every day. I want you to be habitual. <laughs> because it makes me feel secure. I want you to be a habit. Yeah. And so we can be doing this to each other. And then we miss out because if you want someone to be a habit, you don't really have deep respect for them. You don't say, however you are, let's work with that. Yeah, yeah. However you are, I want to offer you good heart. So if I've got an idea that you're supposed to be a certain thing that I've imagined, then there's no real respect in that. No real respect, heart can't open. We treat people as ideas in our mind rather than felt presences in our heart. Does that make any sense? So the energy body, this is not just an idea, actually affects the way our energies run. Because they begin to form, the energy body begins to shape itself in line with those habits. Get compulsive action, compulsive speech, compulsive emotions, knee-jerk reactions. When everything is a knee-jerk reaction, a compulsive reaction, even if it's not bad, you know, it's still a sign that there is delusion there. The energy is being pushed in a certain direction. And this begins to shape us to the point when we're following the, the idea of what we should be, even though our own energy is becoming deeply stressed and depleted. That's what happens. We give our energy and our hearts a way to fulfill the requirements of a socially conditioned person that cannot feed you. It's, it's, not, it's not reality, it cannot feed you. So we're in awareness, with full awareness of this, full awareness of this possibility and Awareness of where this possibility is not just an idea in your mind, but a felt reality. You refer to your energy. And very often people feel the energy is locked up in the top of the body, the head, the shoulders, their face, and it's 
jittery, it's jumpy, or it's very irregular, it crashes, crashes and surges, crashes and surges. This means if you're crashing and surging, if you're rushing and collapsing, you're not in the middle way. Middle way, you're not, you've lost balance. I mean, this is not like your fault. I mean, I sh I'm sure I do this. Because we follow the idea rather than the energy. Now, you might think, well, if I don't, if I just, how do I get to do anything? You know, what is right action? What is right response to social conditions? What is right response to the problems in my family? What is the right response to problems in the world? What is the right response to my job? Do I just do nothing? No. Now you notice that um, when the Buddha began his teaching or his intention to teach, it was established around one principle called Anukampa. Anukampa, and this is translated sometimes as compassion, but there's another word, karuna, which is also translated as compassion, and anukampa is much more basic than that, much more fundamental. It's just the quality that's there when one is open, when you're open-hearted. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to put forth anything. You don't have to conceive anything. It's a natural quality. When the body energy is relaxed, the heart energy is open, its nature is anukampa. This means something like empathy. We sense the world around us, we feel it. We know it, we, we know it through feeling it. So the feeling acts as the connection as empathy. And this particular quality, clearly in the case of the Buddha, became um, a motivator or uh, an agent. So he says, I teach the Dhamma out of Anukampa. I teach the Dhamma out of Anukampa, out of empathy for the world. And this phrase, this word is used in the, in the Sutta Pitika, this word is used much more often than karuna, compassion. The four measureless abidings, metta, karuna, mudita, upeka, are qualities that can arise and can be deliberately cultivated, deliberately developed. And ukampa is just a natural quality. And this means with this we can, what is this, what is the, Fundamental empathy has to be how your empathy with your own energy. So how you're being affected by the presence of another, by situation around you, and your body feels quite nervous and tense and uncertain and unsteady. So, okay, well, right now I can change this, turning that sympathetic attitude towards what's happening in my heart, in my body. Okay, and finding the balance. I'm not asleep, I'm not frightened, I'm not closing it down, but I'm just beginning to acknowledge I'm being stirred up or feeling, feeling overwhelmed or feeling tension. Going to the body and just bearing presence with that, being present, aware of that. If you do this, you'll find your body energy will by itself begin to bring, return you to balance. The more you cultivate that, so it's, it's the return to balance is not something you do, it's something that happens. It's not something you do, it's something that happens by acknowledging what you're experiencing if you like, acknowledging the things that push you or make you feel urgent or pressurized, acknowledge them. Feel them in terms of your heart energy. 
rather than the various stories and narratives that occur about what you should or shouldn't be. Feel them as a sense of uncertainty or anxiety or eagerness. Okay, and notice what's happening. Your whole body maintain these two references, this firmness and this openness. It's firmness and there's openness. Between those two polarities of firmness and openness, the energy will swing and finally settle. So you have these two polarities, firmness, openness, and the energy is moving around in that and it begins to settle. And you get a sense of deep peace. And you're, you're, so then you're, you're, because you experience that, then the basis of your mental actions, your emotional actions, comes from a place of settled peacefulness. Yeah, yeah. This gives you, we feel quite full, quite comfortable. And then as, with that fullness and comfortableness, we can then produce right action, which is not uh, violent or fearful, just right action. Action which keeps us complete. Action which isn't coming from the person, but coming from the Dhamma. Action which isn't coming from my social should be, could be, but coming from settled, steady heart, Dhamma, right action. Empty action. Empty action means there's no self involved in it. We're not trying to prove something, get our own way, or run away. It's open presence. And you'll find this is where you stay in the middle way. Now, what it doesn't mean <laughs> is that everyone's going to agree with you. It doesn't mean, you know, the train is going to run on time. <laughs> it doesn't mean that your uncle won't be dying of cancer. But it does mean that you'll have the resources to meet that, deal with that, respond to that without getting into creating suffering, stress, and exhausting yourself. Without this middle way, we, um, our energy body is co continually depleted by not being able to discharge the stress that occurs in a dissonant world. And this in the energy body then begins to create deep emotional patterns of anxiety, or of depression, or of hopelessness, you know, or of projecting around us so we only see qualities that make us nervous or frightened. And it begins also to affect our physicality. That is, it begins to create um, negative chemicals in the body. So people die or their lives are extremely uh, depleted by stress. It actually affects the nervous system. It affects how the organs are fed and nourished. So if we, our energy of body is not properly cared for, it begins to corrode the physical body, the emotional body, and the karma body. This is why it's, it's, it is the, very important to get this particular peace established and a mindfulness and full awareness of it. Because it's not the peace you hear about. You know, it's okay, well, you can try a diet. You could try doing more yoga. You could go on the beach for a week. You could buy something. That's, no, that doesn't do it. This is, this is the way to return to balance and to cultivate the middle way. And wherever we abide, there is a quality of inner peacefulness with that. So I'll pause there for today. Let's take a few minutes uh, perhaps to let some of that settle down. <clears throat>
you might want to return for two or three minutes just to check in with what's happening in your body and mind right now as you've heard me talk. One or two thoughts may have landed that have been useful for you. Acknowledge that you're open to a group of a couple of hundred people who are tuning into the same thing. That uh, it's being your this channel is being catered for by a particular generous individual who's taking it on, out just out of sheer dumber <laughs> care and concern, and you're part of that. So where you know this is your real world. This is the world that you can feel comfortable in. Sadhu, 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 anumo, 